Coming up on today's Nightly News. Commissioners set to slash UK's EU rebate by 1 billion euros. European Medicines Agency recommends approval of first vaccine for meningitis B. Our EU bills could still rise £560 million despite budget freeze. And part four of our series, Brave New Europe. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. Commissioners set to slash UK's EU rebate by 1 billion euros. The Prime Minister is under mounting pressure to allow a cut in the value of the rebate won by Margaret Thatcher in 1984. David Cameron will tomorrow go into battle against proposals to cut 1 billion euros or 805 million pounds off Britain's annual rebate on its contributions to the European Union. The Prime Minister, already at odds with many of his European counterparts over his demand for a freeze in the EU's budget for 2014 to 2020, is now under mounting pressure to allow a cut in the value of the rebate won by Margaret Thatcher in 1984. Now it's difficult to know who's better at raiding the public's purse, the UK government or the EU diktat. Either way, you can be assured we'll end up paying more for less of better. European Medicines Agency recommends approval of first vaccine for meningitis B. There is currently no authorised vaccine available in the European Union for bacterial meningitis caused by Neisseria meningitidis Group B. Each year, approximately 1.2 million cases of invasive meningococcal disease are recorded worldwide, of which 7,000 occur in Europe. Over 90% of cases of meningococcal meningitis and septicemia are caused by five of the 13 meningococcal serogroups, specifically groups A, B, C, W135 and Y. In Europe, group B is the most prevalent meningococcal serogroup. The European Medicines Agency's Committee for Medicinal Products for Human Use has recommended has recommended the granting of a marketing authorization for Bexero, a new vaccine intended for the immunization of individuals over two months of age against invasive meningococcal disease caused by Neisseria meningitis group B. And the links to the uh, full article are on our website below. Our EU bills could still rise 560 million pounds despite budget freeze. British taxpayers' contributions to the European Union could rise even if David Cameron wins a freeze in overall Brussels spending, it emerged on Tuesday. The Prime Minister will, on Thursday, begin negotiations on an EU budget that would cut spending, but could leave Britain paying more for its membership than it does now. A Brussels summit will see Mr Cameron struggling against French demands to push up EU spending on farm subsidies. Now I wonder just how much the UK taxpayers value EU membership and to this end we are running a poll on our website how much is the EU worth to you and we suggest some values that you might be willing to pay to retain membership of the EU. Why not cast your vote on the website www.theunit.com Submitted by Ron LaBelle here is part four of our series Brave New Europe. So how does the EU function? The European Union consists of the European Commission, the Council of Ministers, the European Parliament and the Council of the Regions. The European Commission. This is an unelected self-selecting and self-regulating and its function is the higher authority free from any control by electoral politicians. There is no mechanism whatsoever for citizens or elected MEPs of the European state to elect or remove any Commission member. In other words, they are members by invitation only and hold the office till they retire or die. The Council of Ministers, made up of relevant national ministers plus the national leader who will meet to discuss whatever subject is needed to be rectified at top level. 
They only meet occasionally to vote for and sign agreements that have already been drafted by the EU Commission. On a majority voting system, they are governed by the European Project's agenda when they do so, and they hold their meetings in secret. The European Parliament at the moment consists of elected members of each member state, MEPs, who are elected at five-year intervals. These MEPs are not elected as individuals by each member state citizens like the English Parliament MPs, but are shortlisted and approved by the national party's higher authority. You vote for the party and leave the choice of the MP to the party leaders. This will favour all members of the party who are devoted followers of the present party leadership and their policies on Europe. The system is somewhat flawed in the fact that anyone who queries or is not happy about future Euro party politics can be removed by that party without the knowledge or consent of the citizens of that national state. Council of the Regions The unelected body in Brussels to whom the regional assemblies of Europe answer to, they are currently intriguing to assume the role of, and so bypass, the European Parliament. But of course, without the need to be elected. This is in keeping with the EU agenda to remove all democratically elected politicians from the chain of political control. The laws they make, called de Directives and Regulations, the EU laws. The unelected Commission has the exclusive right to produce draft directives, regulations and advisory documents that become European law. Draft directives are usually sent to the select parliament committees for consideration, but debate on these are limited and only suggestions on the directive are welcome which may be taken into consideration by the Commission members. These directives will be put forward to the full European Parliament which in most parts are voted in without discussion by the MEPs. Regulations. These may be subject to very minor amendments, but must be implemented in full. They do not require formal ratification. An EU regulation is the law of the EU and its member states, regardless of the state's own laws. Advisory documents are implemented at the discretion of member nations. So let's sum up the above directives, regulations and documents as stated above. The major and quite disastrous defect of this process is that the European Commission officials who generate these draft directives are very rarely, if ever, worked in the area that they are regulating and thus cause deep-lying harm to the system that they're trying to control. Also, of course, it's open to outside influence from multinational corporations and the wider industry who wish to sway a better deal or make things go their way, um, which can often be to the detriment of others. Well, that's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates, and we'd be delighted to receive your comments as well. Finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.